Hello everyone, teachers and students alike. This is a good example on the topic of the lesson, how to raise a chihuahua. For when it comes to the visual aspect, a lot of students tend to learn efficiently and effectively this way. So here is a good activity for them. And we will hopefully be introducing this tangibly and fully immersed in it in the next couple weeks. I hope you all are excited, because I sure am. So for this, you need a certain mystery box of some sort, or you can make it fun, and I say the goal is to be creative as much as you can, visually too. You could also bring in a suitcase, or a little briefcase, or whatever, just to make it like, ooh, what's in the thing, you know? Especially when it comes to upper end of elementary, this tends to get the imagination and all the juices flowing of what it, what it could be and everything like that. So that is a very good way of doing that. For example, I'm just going to use the mystery box or the wooden crate I have. So the goal of it is to take multiple images of different dogs. But since we are talking about chihuahuas and how to raise one, this will be different. So you open it up and you'll see this is a book or these are Red bone hounds, as they show it here. This are chihuahuas. Senior and adult, both of them the same, but they are chihuahuas nonetheless. Along with other, several other pictures and stuff like that, these drawings of them of any sort too. But make sure that you have at least 20 of them. And have multiple copies so different students can work collaboratively collaboratively within groups and stuff like that uh, but visually they need to see things with their eyes so they will have to organize them on which are chihuahuas and which aren't this is prior uh, to the lecture that they attended and the readings that they've done they also have to see visual imagery from the presentation before and any questions that they ask hopefully that will have addressed um, anything that was giving them trouble um, this is post-inquisitive, so it is good, and the, as the teacher should, be there to help but not complete their tasks for them. Instead, they can rely on to the PowerPoint, if they so choose, or the activity. But the goal of it is to organize which are chihuahuas and which aren't based on the characteristics of what you've seen. There will also be descriptions on how much they weigh and other things like that, so... Um, if it is difficult to see or the image quality doesn't go all the way, they can still see the descriptions of it. The second phase of it, uh, I always think assignments should have a second phase too, is involving five different dogs in the room, assuming we can get volunteers or chaperones for this, or perhaps the administration will allow this to happen. If not, we can always just do a uh, web service or a Google Meet or something similar to that and get people's dogs on camera without having to bring them on the school facility. But having a total of five different dogs, two of them being chihuahuas, all, they're, all the students are allowed to do is look. They're not allowed to touch, they're not allowed to feel. All they're allowed to do is look. And they see five different dogs walking around within a room, within a given space. Two of them are chihuahuas and, five, uh, and the other three aren't. These can vary in size depending on how you would like to structure these, but what we're going to be doing is two different chihuahuas. One's long-haired, one's short-haired, the other one apple-head, the other one deer-head. And then the other two, one's a greyhound, the other one's a dashund, and the third one will be a shih tzu. Different ones, different places. Or you could switch it up and we'll have like a Dalmatian, a Doberman, a Pitbull, whichever. But per preferably uh, dogs that are smaller and can be easily maintained or at least taken away should the need arise. After that, um, the task is complete. Offer feedback and I hope they learn lots. I'm sure they will. Thank you.